Hello and welcome to Tim's BMW Repairs and Information. And since we last spoke, my E31 is back on the drive. Yes, it is. Yes, it's only been five months since the accident, so I thought I'd better update you to, to some extent. For those of you who haven't seen the rest of this series, it's all about my car being in an accident. And I say being in an accident rather than me being in an accident because I wasn't even in the car at the time. No, it was on a test drive by the garage. And as they test drove it, a car missed the junction completely and drove straight into the side of my E31. He took out the front door so it would never open ever again and took out the rear quarter. And to add a bit more injury, he hit the rear suspension, popped one of the tyres and completely mangled the rear subframe. So, yeah, that was good fun. Now, my car's insured for £30,000. Not a problem at all. Yes, it is. It's not my insurance. I wasn't in the car. It's not the garage's insurance. He wasn't the perpetrator. It was a third party. And he had a company called Darwin do his insurance for him. And Darwin just said no to everything. I'd like £30,000 for my car, please. No. I tell you, one of the good things is we never let the insurance company get hold of my car because I would never have seen it again. Fortunately, uh, Lee Shannon, who was the driver at the time and the owner of the garage, managed to drive it back to his premises. It stayed there for a couple of weeks with him having to get in from the passenger side and drive it in and out of his workshop every single day. And after a while, we decided, well, nothing much is going to happen. The insurance company still haven't decided what they're doing with the car. And so I got my friend John McLaughlin to bring it home. And there it sat in my drive for about three weeks. After that, it went to the CNS Coachworks, did a lovely job, but had a few problems. And we go through those. One of them being my fault. I sat on the ashtray and broke it because I had to get in from the passenger side. Headliner was damaged at CNS Coachworks and that now has to be replaced and they seem to have popped the rear lights as well because they don't work anymore and every time you put a new fuse in it pops immediately. The next thing of course rear suspension a lot of the parts are NLA from BMW no longer manufactured and so you have to go to extreme lengths to sort out your suspension problems. Now, the arms like the upper wishbone and the lower wishbone, or the cross member, as it says on real OEM, they cost an arm and a leg. The upper one certainly does. The lower one, you can't get anymore. No, can't, can't get it. They're not made anymore. What you can do is take them off and have the bushes replaced. Not a bit of a problem because my car's sitting on them in my drive. So what I did is I bought a whole E31 rear axle, and took it apart, sent off the arms to Phoenix Motorsport, who replaced the bushes. Eccentric bolts, one failed. You can't get those from BMW anymore. I got them from Wolf, like wok.de. No problem there. One of the ball joints, you can't get that anymore from BMW. Wok refurbishes them. So yeah, the rest of the ball joints and rose bearings and all the rest of it, they can still be got. So that's not a problem. So that was the mechanical bit sorted out. So that's what this episode's all about. It's about what happened at the body shop and how things went there. It went very well, apart from a few problems. And we'll go through them now. Okay, so we know it went to CNS Coachworks to have all the body work done. And uh, yeah, they've done a fantastic job. It was such a difficult repair as well. They said one of the real hard things to do was get the door open because, of course, it was hit right on the door. So, yep, yeah, anyway, they got in, did all the work. I saw it about halfway through and I was just so disappointed. It looked an awful mess. And I'll show you some of that video now. Yep, yeah, it was rather dispiriting and I wish I hadn't gone. Right, I'm at CNS Coachworks. Here's my car. Yep, yeah, unfortunately, it's revealed all sorts of problems. The seals were gone. Seals were gone, that's the word I was thinking of. So they've all been replaced. Seals are done. Quarter panel on, so that's a brand new quarter panel. Brand new door, which is over here and primed. So that's all ready to be reassembled. Yeah, it's a lot of disassembly work, I'm afraid. And uh, yeah, the car's not looking its best. So I've got the rear bumpers under here 
and a few other bits and bobs. So, yeah, well, it's, uh, Frank, it's looking a bit sorry for itself at the moment. It's still got its covers on to protect the seats. But there's bits of car everywhere, I'm afraid, in offices and on walls and stuff like that. Anyway, since that point, they finished all the work. They mopped it all over and cleaned up the interior. And, of course, John McLaughlin, again, picked it up and delivered it to me. I wasn't even in. He just plonked it in the drive, stuck the key through the letterbox. He's a great bloke. And as we, every time we see each other, yeah, we've known each other since 1963. And that's true. So there you go. Well, John did a fantastic job getting it here. My initial look at the car, I wasn't happy, to be honest. I wasn't happy at all. There's some marks in the paint. And yeah, I'll show you a video of when I first looked at it and how disappointed I was. And yeah, that's a handprint. I can see it there. See the fingers going up. Yeah, it's a handprint in the paint. I don't know what's happened to my door handle. Look at the state of that. That's absolutely knackered, isn't it? Uh, there's another one up here, which does look like... There it is. Just... Right, right in the bang in the middle of the picture. Don't know what that is. But it didn't wash off. So there we go. Okay, so of all the work they've done, that is... The only damage so you can't complain about that can you it looks looks absolutely perfect so excellent color match you can get away with all sorts with more of metallic to be honest because one panel always looks different to the other because it's at a different angle to the sun i just don't know what's going on here see that it's sort of flat now yeah that definitely shows the problem and unfortunately, we've got the same at the back here. I just don't understand what's happened there. But I'm not disappointed anymore. And the reason why is I've quickly whizzed those with my tiny little whizzy wheel using a 3M's uh, Finesset compound. And yet yeah, I've got rid of all these sort of blurry marks in it. It looked like, it looked like someone's handprint round the door, I must admit. Even the door handle I've managed to sort out, so it actually looks perfect now. Right, take two on having the car back from the uh, body shop. It is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, all those little scuffy things which were around the place, they're just uh, marks in the polish, not in the paintwork. I think there was a failure of mopping the car. I think that was the problem. They seem to scuff it up more than they mopped it. And it looks absolutely perfect, apart from my boot, which started failing a little while ago. And I don't know why I didn't get it done the last time. It's got the clear coat has obviously started failing. It doesn't look too bad from a distance. Righty-ho. Now, one thing that caught my eye was the misalignment of the uh, filler cap, uh, filler cover. And that's because my actuator has stopped working. In fact, it stopped working a while ago. And it's only the actuator that keeps this lined up. So the car's locked, but I can open it. And what aligns it is this and the little doofer that pops out of there, but it doesn't pop out anymore. So it doesn't get aligned. So you have to poke it back in place. So that's the next job, mend the uh, actuator. So that's fine again now. There's funny scuffy marks all around the door handle. Yeah, done those with a little rotary polisher. Yeah, they were no problem at all. And the funny mark down there on the paint, that's all gone. Right, -o. next thing, wheels. Yeah, these are MV2s on it. They're my winter tyres for the E64. Probably going to need them this year. Anyway, Rondel 58 should be on those. Now, the place that I was going to use in Gillingham, tried them, that's recommended by loads of people. So I gave them a call uh, because they said, you know, they can do the courier service, service here and back. That'd be great. Just say goodbye to the wheels and get them back all nice and shiny. No, don't do that anymore. Lepsons, that was it, Lepsons in Gillingham. So they don't transport it anymore. And if you want to transport them yourself using a courier, they have to be all boxed up and bubble wrapped and all the rest of it. It sounds like a recipe for a disaster. And then they don't send them back again afterwards. So stuffed there. 
So are you somewhere else recommended by um, Lee Shannon's uh, friend, uh, Richard, thanks Richard, my allies in Basingstoke. And wisdom up there, yeah, it doesn't take long. Basingstoke's only up the road from here, about 40 miles. And yeah, they're really nice people, yeah, lovely people they are. Here we go then, stage one of getting the E31 back on the road is done. They're back from my alloys and they look absolutely perfect, which is all, always a worry because I'm sure to do something to them when I put them on. Yeah, absolutely lovely. And uh, yeah, two of them, the two rears, have got new tyres on. And that's because one of them got popped and the other one was worn enough so I couldn't uh, risk uh, putting a brand new one and having a well-worn one on there as well. Probably upset the ABS ASC plus T more, uh, more than likely. Can't get Falcon 510s, so these are Falcon FK 520s. Slightly different tread pattern, yeah, got these sort of lumpy bits here, not quite sure what they're for, but I'm sure it's all very exciting. So yeah, they're right, 265, 35ZR18, with the ZR standing for extremely fast. Two arrears. 10J or are they 10.5 I can't remember Rondel 58s and two front ones but yeah they're absolutely perfect so that's my alloys and price for all of that so that's four alloys refurbished one was slightly bent two new tyres about 670 quid yeah it's not cheap is it but the door opens now which is look at that not only does the door open it stays open and it hasn't done that throughout my whole ownership. It's always closed itself back again, but now fully working model. Okie doke. So the interior looks okay. It looks dirty. Yeah, leather looking lovely, of course. Looks a bit dirty in places, but yeah, it looks fine. Yeah, problem headliner. Can I get the camera to go up there? Well, yeah, so you can see it's got pock marks and a huge bubble. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it's all flopped down, I'm afraid. So yeah, I've bought the headlining material, so I'm gonna either get CNS to do that or do it myself. Might be good fun to do it myself. But I must say, dashboard looks all right. No marks on it or anything. Yeah, it all looks lovely. Soft touch plastic. Still got all the soft touch on it. Um, yeah, the ashtray isn't back in again yet, so they've got to go on. Looks like I've got, they took my V8 badge off. Well, that's going to slow it down, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah, I'm pleased. I'm very pleased because, yeah, it has survived being in a body shop without any leather damage. Right, well, the problem with the lights turned out to be a lot more complicated than I initially thought. I was expecting just cut into the looms as they go up into the boot or trunk because they're always the cause of the problem. But no, there was no short circuit there. So this problem is different in the fact that it was a short circuit rather than an open circuit. So once I stripped all the looms back, I could not find any short circuit in there. And then I realized that there were more things not working than there were before. And that was ashtray light wasn't on and that was one of the bulbs I'd replaced already. And the instrument lights weren't working either, so I didn't have any backlights in any of the instruments. So it gets very complicated at that point because it's an enormous amount of circuit diagrams that cover this. The initial circuit diagram, I thought, well, it just goes, the power just goes from the light switch to the lights, that's it. No, but if you look in another circuit diagram, you find that it goes everywhere else. Now I'll do a separate uh, video on the fault finding of this because it was reasonably interesting for people who are like electronics, but not very interesting at all for anyone else. So I did eventually find the problem. I will not reveal it at the moment. There were two faults uh, caused by when the car was put back together that caused this problem. Yeah, and two separate ones. It sort of exasperated the fault finding, I must admit. So yeah, five hours, but I can now say it's all working. Right, so there we go, really. That's about as far as I need to go today. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, the car's looking great. Uh, headliner, that's a problem. I'll have to sort that out. That's gonna be up to me, I think. 
might try seeing this coach works might be worth a go it might not i don't know um so yeah headlining that's got to be done anyway i'm very pleased with the progress and i'll see you in the next update